wow. <laughs> this is such a nice car. And it's time to drive to our first location, which is about an hour and a half away, where I'm going to meet up with a family. And I'm gonna live with them for a few days. Ah! We're driving in Sweden. I do not feel qualified to be doing this. Let the Swedish adventure begin. I had to stop the car for these flowers. Whoa, they look incredible. I don't know what they are. They've got these palm shaped leaves and loads of blue flowers in a spike. There's the hire car. It's a Volvo B4, or is that an eight? Whatever that means. This is gonna get me around Swedish Lapland this week. All right, let's stop looking at flowers. Hello, it's good to meet you. That was the best drive I've ever had. Where shall I put the car? I always get a little bit nervous when I meet up with new people and I'm in a different country. Hello. I was greeted by Pia and Henry Hoover, who run a company up here called Hoover Hideaway, where they run food experiences and also have some beautiful places to stay. It's definitely colder than I expected today. They showed me around my accommodation where I would be staying for the next few days. Oh, it's so cozy. <laughs> oh my Apartment. goodness. I was not expecting this. You have your own sauna tomorrow evening, maybe? Yeah. The real deal. Okay, we yeah. have a wood fired sauna by the lake. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's. I'm so, so you, excited. So for you that. can learn how to do it properly. It's uh, from 17. 50 something. Yeah. Whoa. Maybe I'll learn, but Hundreds of like. years. Yes. I could sleep in different beds every night. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Oh, yeah. oh, more beds up there. There's beds everywhere. Yeah, I wasn't expecting such luxury, to be honest. I was then shown around the little village where there are 23 people living. You know, Lia Hitlia, that means seductive, the name of the village. It's Henry's son, Christian, that's his house. A, like summer house, a weekend cottage. Okay. That one. There are 23 people living here and we have 22 saunas. <laughs> one so for pretty much one for each person. Yes. <laughs> the midnight sun. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Because of how far north I was, it never actually gets completely dark at this time of year. It was quite an odd feeling being up until the early hours of the morning and the sunlight not disappearing. That was the most incredible evening. It is gone midnight and we just have been watching the light above the lake. The mist was rising because the water is a lot warmer than the air and it was just incredible. I just spotted a hare outside the hut. Whoa! Got such long, big, bouncy legs. Right, I gotta get some sleep. Doesn't get darker than that out there. See you tomorrow. I kept on thinking it was morning time because it was light the whole night. So through my closed eyes, it was kind of bright. So I kept on thinking it was time to wake up. I'm gonna have a sauna, I think, and then we're gonna have a food experience today. I love food. Food is my favorite thing. So we're going to do some eating. There is nothing more relaxing. It's amazing. Mm. 
you may have noticed lots of the buildings here are painted this red colour and uh, I, I was wondering why why is every house painted is it like the law that you have to have your house painted red uh, but there's actually a reason for this the red pigment is a byproduct of copper mining and when mixed with linseed oil it creates a durable coating that protects the wood I think it looks quite beautiful too The cockerel's awake, I'm awake, and I'm just standing next to a beautiful wood stack of birch logs. While sat around the fire last night, I realized the importance of wood up here because they're constantly burning things, either to keep warm or for saunering or for cooking food. And they said birch is the best wood for like, firewood. And they mainly use the pine trees for construction and building. Back home in England, I use the bark for starting my smoker when I'm beekeeping. It's a really good fire lighter, very flammable. The Hoover family took me to their outdoor kitchen where they would be preparing a selection of dishes for myself and a couple of guests who were visiting from Switzerland. I thought it was just the kitchen over here, but it turns out they've got a bar as well. At the bar we made some cocktails using a syrup made from these flowers and also birch sap that had been preserved from the spring. Cheers. Cheers. These were served with some little bites consisting of a crunchy thin cracker filled with cream and a lingonberry. Henry showed us how to make some traditional flatbreads which were baked on a hot metal plate. These were served with a mushroom soup and some beer. So on these benches are reindeer fur and it is so soft and, and cosy. Such a nice thing to sit on. Meadow sweet juice. It's really good. The next course consisted of a thin seed bread with pickled onion and some calyx roe, which are fish eggs from a white fish. I wasn't sure whether I would enjoy the fish eggs, but soon I realized why people love it so much. It has a very mild fishy flavor, which isn't too strong, and each egg has a little crunch to it, giving it a very interesting texture. The salty roe with the sour pickled onion and creme fraiche was a great combination and something I had never eaten before. And that's one of my favourite things about travelling to new places and meeting up with locals. They can show you and teach you things which you would have never seen otherwise. Two more courses followed. Potatoes seem like a staple ingredient out here and whilst driving around I actually saw lots of potato fields. These potatoes were dipped into melted butter. Next we had a reindeer dish which included both the meat and blood from a reindeer. I learned that reindeer are a huge part of culture in Swedish Lapland. In fact, where we were sat eating is a reindeer corral, where once or twice a year the deer are rounded up and tagged. We made our way into a tent where we were served coffee cheese and a berry and biscuit dessert. You're probably wondering what coffee cheese is. Cubes of cheese are placed into hot coffee and they go soft and squeaky when you bite into them. This coffee is drunk out of a mug made from birch burl. Come closer. Wow. The tail of a whale. This is a white ale. That was such a different uh, dining experience to what I have ever seen before. I, I feel so relaxed. Normally when you go into a restaurant, everything feels quite fast paced. The chefs and waiters are rushing around to get the food on the table on time. But this was kind of the opposite. There was nothing rushed about this morning. I reckon if you check my heart rate, it would be very, very low. And I think my favorite part of today was sipping coffee out of those really beautiful uh, wooden mugs next to the fire in the, in the shelter. And this evening, 
I think I'm gonna go and have a barbecue with Piero and Henry down by the lake so we can watch the midnight sun again. So this was the old bridge yes. over here. So now they've built a new one. They can use this one as firewood. So in here is a sauna powered by burning wood. Some tinder. So that heats up these stones in here. Here. That goes down to the lake. And just like that, you've got a handle. Yeah. Sugar and pancake. Yum. Oh, wow. This is, this is one. one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, what one is what? I've got too many drinks here. I've got beer. Yeah. <laughs> beer, wine, you have to and... You to drink them. Yeah, I've got to drink them all now. <laughs> Cheers. All we've done today is eat. Eat. <laughs> eat. eat. Drink. And eat. Eat. Like, you know. Yeah, that's the best way. And make fire. And make fire, yeah. yeah. Sauna time. View out of the sauna of the lake. That is the best feeling ever. 10 o'clock at night, still fully bright. I don't know why we don't do that in England. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And you just feel so clean. Yeah. And you, you haven't used any soap no. or anything. You don't need anything because now, now that every, everything is flushed down. Yeah. I've been attempting to carve a fork for the last like, two hours. The fire is going and it is keeping the mosquitoes away. And it's about one o'clock in the morning right now. That's meant to be my butter knife, and there's my fork. I want to stay up all night. It's time for a midnight feast. I've got some reindeer meat left over from dinner. Reindeer sandwich. Reindeer is good. I should probably go to bed now. One last bit of excitement for the day. Hello there. Look at that. Have a good day. Have a good night. All right, it's bedtime. Today, Pia says she's going to drive me around in her car so I can get a little view of the surrounding area because so far all I've done is spend time at this place. Pia showed me around some of the local area. We went up a mountain for an amazing view of the seemingly endless forest. Welcome. So that is Finland over there. Oh, I can just hear them in my ears. I don't think they're actually like sucking my blood. They're just oh, being are... annoying. As well as fishing and foraging, they also do some gardening. I think there's some potatoes growing in there. And then inside the greenhouse, there's some tomatoes. Henry was telling me how he sometimes makes beer from his own hops. It's time for the last supper with the Hoover family. I 
want to say a massive thank you to Pierre and Henry for looking after me so well and teaching me so much about their life up here in the north of Sweden. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care again. Goodbye, Lodge. That was one of the coolest places I've ever stayed. If you want to learn more about the place that I've just stayed and if you want to stay in that lodge for yourself, I'll leave links in the video description where you can find out more information about that. But now it's time to keep driving. I just opened the wrong side. I'm used to English cars. Let's go. No way, there's a reindeer. Hey, what's up? Look at that. Two reindeer in the road. Hello. It's a baby. Oh, you're so cute. Be safe out there, don't get run over. I just met up with a guy called Anders and he's gonna take me to where I'm going to be staying for the next three days. It's raining, but apparently it's gonna be better weather tomorrow. I hope so. Welcome to Nala Yavi Wilderness Camp. I don't know if I said that correctly. It's basically a camp made up of a selection of wooden huts and lodges. A couple are for sleeping in, like this one here and that one. That's the one I'm going to be staying in. And then there's a more communal space over there where you can sit around the table, make food and chat with your friends. It wouldn't be a Swedish camp without a sauna. In this building here, it's a place where you can sit around and make a fire. Fire, grill, loads of space for people. And this is going to be my home for the next three, four days. In the middle of the forest by a lake in northern Sweden. Anders said you have to be very careful if you're a long person. And I am very long. That door is quite low. Very basic, very simple, but it's everything you need. And apparently around here you've got bears, wolverines, moose, reindeer, golden eagles, and sometimes quite a lot of mosquitoes. But today it's actually not bad. There's a few flying about, but the wind is helping disperse them a bit, I think. Time to chill out and relax. In the evening I started making some fires. One in my hut where I would be sleeping, another to cook my dinner over, and two fires in the sauna. One to heat up some water and another to heat up the rocks. I think fire making is one of my favourite things to do. This is the view from inside the sauna. So when you get out, you can look over the lake. Ah, the fun you can have with a fire and some food. I charred up some pepper and tomatoes and then put the sausage and the tomato inside the pepper and some rocket leaves which are really tasty. That's amazing. Cooking over a campfire is just the best. I didn't think I would catch anything. This is a perch. They have such amazing stripes. It was fun, but I want to catch a bigger one. I'm filming a moose swimming in the lake. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen one of these things. And they're huge. They are massive. It keeps getting in the lake and then swimming a bit and then going onto shore. That was epic. Oh, I'm so happy. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Sweden was to see a moose. There's camp. 
We're gonna head out and explore the lake. I can see the moose again. It's right at the other end of the lake swimming through the water. They are huge animals. And I didn't realize they were good at swimming, but they apparently are. It's funny because back in England, when people go fishing, they're always racing the light because it gets dark at this time of year about nine o'clock. And you want to get in as much fishing as you can before the light goes. But here, you don't need to rush because it doesn't get dark. <laughs> You've got 24 hour fishing time. I think I've got a fish. Yes, I have. Oh, it's a perch and it's bigger than the one I caught earlier. That is a beautiful Swedish perch. This is my view right now. It is just stunning. Oh yeah, I've found the fish now. I might have a second dinner, yeah. A couple of these perks would actually be quite nice. Hey, <laughs> that one will feed me. Cool. Fish number three. Perch on the left, potato on the right. Fresh off the fire. It's my last day here at this little wooden hut before we start driving back down south. But I think today Anders is going to take me for a little hike so we can explore the local area. So I think we call this, I think, lichen. Yes, it, that and is for reindeer. Mm. Reindeer eat this. Eat it, yes. When the snow is snow too is deep, here. yes, the snow is up here. Yes, yes, they so can erase it very easy, and, and the hard snow they can erase it. And is that reindeer poo? That is from reindeer. Yes, they have been here. Absolutely. That is moose wood. Yes, the moose wood, ah, of course. Moose poo on the trail. We are right jumped here. So that's a moose. Moose track. Yes, it's massive. This is moose country. Yeah. Okay. Blueberries growing here, like that. I love these ferns, they look so nice. You must have overload of blueberries. Do you freeze them? You freeze them, of course. All of this is blueberries. Yeah, it's so nice when the wind starts blowing. Absolutely. It moves the mosquitoes away. The wonderful things you find. That is a moose track, and then inside the moose track is a little frog or toad. That is Mette Yarvi. Mette Yarvi. The colour of these birch trees are amazing. And you got the lichens growing on them as well. That was a good hike. Back at the camp. The snow gets so deep here and what Anders is trying to do is make a platform for this uh, fridge cooler container. Um, it's like a wooden box which keeps food cold in the winter and this keeps it above the snow line. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 
It's time to leave the woods, but it's been three of the most relaxing days of my life. And if you're the kind of person who enjoys the peace and quiet where you're not gonna be disturbed by anyone, then I would definitely recommend this as a place to stop off at. I'll leave links in the description of the video where you can find out more about this place and come here for yourself. Back on the road. I think one of my favorite things about being in Swedish Lapland is just driving about. It's so relaxing. You can spot wildlife from the road. You can look at all the beautiful red buildings and dream about how you're gonna live in one of them one day. I just arrived at Roland's house and he's actually a fisherman up here in Swedish Lapland. And today we're gonna to get a little insight into what life is like as a fisherman up here in the Swedish archipelago. We jumped in Roland's old Volvo and drove down to his little production facility where he runs his business from. Roland's business is called Stolons Fisk, and as well as selling a range of fish products, he also offers archipelago and forest trips, as well as food tasting experiences. He does all his fishing from a six meter long boat, and once the fish are caught, he brings them into a processing room where they are prepared and packaged for selling. He built this room himself so he could customise it just how he wanted it and it also has a smoker in, which is for smoking some of his fish products. Roland's shop front was a large freezer and worked on a trust based system where people from the village can stop by and pick up fish whenever they want. So that's salmon in there? Yep. Salmon. We took a look at some of the species that Roland catches, which include salmon, whitefish and mostly herring. So that's what you mostly fish for. Interestingly, the archipelago is brackish water, so there are both freshwater and saltwater fish living here. Anyway, it was time to get on with some work. Roland had been fishing the day before and caught a few herring that needed processing. We spent the next hour cutting off herring heads and packing them into buckets with lots of salt. These would then be left to ferment, which would help preserve them. Once the herring work was done, we went back to the house to cook up some dinner. Roland smoked some salmon on the barbecue and grilled the whitefish over an open fire. This was eaten with a type of fermented milk product and some thin crackers. Let's take this one. Whoa, that's the biggest one, jeez. just finished our fish that we have for dinner and now we are heading out, I think we're heading to an island where we're gonna sleep tonight. And also I'm gonna see how Roland sets his uh, nets. We're going out on the boat. And this is used for the net. Net hole. We're headed out on a fishing trip. After a 20 minute boat drive, we arrived on an island where Roland has a little cabin. So we're gonna be staying on this island? Yeah, in the small cabin with a blue door. Oh. Just in front of the sun. Nice. <laughs> Wild strawberries. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock in the evening and we are off to set the nets in hope to catch some fish. Fishing clothes. Fisherman Alex. Take the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for you, and we're still tied to the land. <laughs> Roland dropped down three nets, all in different areas, to give him the best chance of catching some herring. Each net was set between two large floats, so we could locate them easily. They were about 60 meters long and two meters wide. Once the nets were set, they were left till the following morning. Let's 
go check the nets. Before checking the nets, Roland showed me some of the impressive rock formations on some of the islands. He explained to me that he owns a share of this island and it's one of his favourites to visit. So how did the first net go? Not good at all. It was a lot of white fish that I don't want to catch. The next couple of nets were much more successful and there were plenty of herring, which meant we had some work to do when we got back to shore. Much better. The nets were pulled up through an interesting machine which shook the net from side to side to release the fish, which would fall onto a tarpaulin ready to pick up. This actually took quite a bit of time, but after all the nets were emptied of fish, we could now bring them into the kitchen and clean them up. Once the fish heads were cut off, they were put into a bucket with salt water to help clean them further. These would then soon be ready to turn into fermented herring and sold to the locals in the village. Thank you. See ya. Yeah, see you. Well, that's the end of my Swedish Lapland adventure. I'm driving back to the airport now and I'm gonna go back to England. That was a proper experience. I did not expect to end up cutting off fish heads uh, with a fisherman in the Swedish archipelago. Thanks so much to Roland for giving me a little insight into his life up here. And I'd also like to thank Heart of Lapland and all the people that I've met on this journey because it would have been a lot less interesting if I hadn't met up with all the, all the great people. Everyone was so friendly and so kind and welcoming and I think that's what really makes a memorable, fun adventure. I'll leave links in the description of this video to where you can learn more about all the places that I visited and where you can learn more about Swedish Lapland because it is such a different place. It's so vast, there's forests and lakes everywhere. The wildlife is really cool. Seeing that moose the other day was, was definitely a highlight. I'll see you soon for another video. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. I think it'll probably be another... Oh, I'm going to be harvesting my honey soon from my honeybees. Stay tuned for that. See you soon. <laughs>